join us here this Sunday morning. This is Father's Day, so I say Happy Father's Day. Uh, I'm so thankful for my dad, my father, Richard R.W. Uh, Dick Johnson. I call him Dad. He went home to with Jesus to be with Jesus eight years ago, and I really miss him. Um, I'm also so thankful for my grandpa Dan, that was my mother's dad, uh, really a great friend, and then my grandpa Ted, my dad's dad. I appreciate all the influence I received from each of them. I was also, uh, I'm so thankful for my father-in-law, Jack Fisher. Um, he died 36 years ago, and um, I just uh, really miss him. He died, died tragically in an accident, and um, he drowned, and um, it was really a tough time. So I, I really miss him and enjoy the time I spent with him. Of course, I dated his daughter, so there was always great fear in my heart. But uh, I miss him dearly. I um, also want to say Happy Father's Day to my brothers, my older brothers, Brad and Mark, and my brother-in-laws, my son-in-laws. I'm, I'm the father of five grown children and 11 grandchildren now. So I'm so thankful for the wonderful father opportunity that I've had and now as a grandfather. Uh, I'm thankful for the fathers of our church and all of you who are joining us today. I'd say Happy Father's Day. You're doing a great job, and I want to encourage you to continue uh, to do a great job. I believe I have a good word for you today. I'm going to close with a story about my dad and myself, and hopefully it will uh, kind of tie the message together. But let's pause for a moment. Let's pray. Lord, take our time together. Help it to be time well spent. Open our understanding in your word. Let each of our fathers indeed and all of us be encouraged to do and be all that you've called us to be in this day. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a Bible, I'd like you to turn to Judges chapter 7, verses 4 through 7. Just a few verses there. Judges chapter 7. And the question today, or the title is, Are We Paying Attention? Or, to shorten it up, Paying Attention. And we're going to look at Gideon's 300 men at the riverbank. I know my dad paid great attention. Uh, he, you couldn't get by with much with my dad. And my kids have recognized that, that Grandpa Dick always was paying close attention. Um, he certainly kept an eye on everything that was going around. So I want us to be thinking about us as fathers and how important it is for us to pay attention and really realize where we're at and recognize how we can do the best with what we have. Here's what the scripture says in Judges 7. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say, This one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say, This one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, Separate those who lap the water, who lap the water with their tongues as dog laps from those who kneel down to drink. Three hundred of them drank from cupped hands, so they cupped their hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. And the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lap, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. Now Gideon's army was at 32,000 men and then uh, down to 10,000 and now down to 300. God's still looking for those men who haven't checked out just as he put these men through a sifting process by watching how they drink water, he's also observing you and me. He's looking into our lives. And I want to say, first of all, God sifted out those who were afraid. 22,000 men were afraid out of 32,000. Then God sifted out those who were self-indulgent. He eliminated the fearful first, then the self-indulgent. All but 300 did not look up to watch for the enemy or their brother's interest. So 9,700 got down on their face in the river, just put their face right down in the river and began to uh, take up all that was there. 300 did not. 
God sifted out those who were not alert. The Bible tells us, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. We need to have the ability to, to spin like a swivel, keeping a watchful eye on our surroundings. And that's the key here that I want us to really focus in on is, are you available? Are you alert? Have you checked in or have you checked out? Are you in or are you out? We often say people have checked out, they just haven't left yet. And the Bible really speaks clearly about walking circumspectly or looking about. Are you aware of the times and how they are ever changing? Think about this. The times are changing. The sons of Issachar had a sense of the times and then they understood what they should do. Are your children accumulating resources or like we would say tools are accumulated in your toolbox little by little? Have the children in your life, grandchildren, your children, accumulated resources little by little over a long period of time? Or in other words, are there shelves in their warehouse being stocked? We could say that we live in a generation where the moral warehouse of many young people is spiritually bankrupt or the shelves are empty. Are you loving your wife? Speaking well of her and teaching your children to honor her. Now I give this little tip all the time to people who are married and if you're married and have a wife, this is a great tip for you. Listen, love your wife. That's the greatest stability you can give to your children and to your home, is to love your wife and honor her. Honor her on a birthday, honor her on Mother's Day, honor her at Christmas, honor her just because. And if your children are younger, you can teach them how to honor their mother. And then when they get older, you can remind them to continue to honor their mother. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that he shall go or she shall go. And when they're older, they'll not depart from it. I can tell you it starts early. This honoring principle or this honoring uh, part of honoring her mother or honoring a father or just in honor in general starts early. Are you praying for your family every day like Job did as a regular practice? The Bible tells us that um, Job was a man who was totally devoted to God and hated evil with a passion Job made a habit of praying for his children every day. Job prayed for his children. We hear about the power of a praying grandmother or a praying mother, but what about the power of a praying father? Often children think men don't pray, but just like a librarian said, men, when they come in to read for the children, the children are amazed because they see so many women reading, they think men don't read. We hear so much about praying women that we forget men pray. And I think it's great for you as the man in your house or your, as a husband or as a father to, to pray, not only for your children, but with your children. Here's some things we could watch out for. Pay close attention to. I often say, don't sell the farm. You're a father forever. forever. You know, you never give up on your kids. And like the prodigal son of the prodigal daughter in Luke chapter 15, the father never lost hope. He prayed, he waited, and eventually his son came to his senses and came home. I mean, you think of all of the resources that were available to the son, and the son left, but the father said the door is always open. If you want to come home, you can come home, and I think that's a great way to look at it. Try to get as close or stay as close uh, to being centered in life as is possible. So we find balance or we find center. It's difficult to achieve. It's even more difficult to keep. But try to find balance in your life and set priorities, first things first, but make certain your children and your family are high on that priority list because that's the investment that's gonna pay not only in this life, but the life to come and for generation after generation after generation. Spend quantity and quality time with your kids engage them. Uh, children really won't wait. Just think about this. Children spell love 
T-I-M-E. The people who have the most influence with your children are the people who spend the most time with them. I can tell you that from personal experience, and I can tell you that from what I've observed. Influence, time, they go hand in hand. Make it a priority to understand your children. Really get to know them. If you have more than one, they are definitely different. And try to find out their interests and try to spend time in getting to know them. The everyday stuff will pay off. It's only a matter of time. Doing the things that really matter most. I heard Garth Brook in one of his, um, the story of his life, that his dad worked really hard. But every day when he came home, he spent time with them as children, and, and he'll never forget that because his dad was tired and could have said, I don't have time, but he took time for the kids. He said, I don't even think my dad ever had a time that he could spend on himself. He invested time to work, and he invested time in us as a family. Later, he said that his father and his mother attended all of his concerts. Think about that for a moment. Take advantage of everyday happenings and do some teaching. Think about the fact that in life there are many lessons. Deuteronomy tells us that we can teach our children all throughout the day with every activity. Show affection and um, a gentle spirit. Love your children. H hugs are good. They're certainly uh, something that we should let our children know they're loved and affirmed and valued. And we think the world of them. What kind of a home was it that led the prodigal son to go back to his father? It was a home full of love. Even those who worked for the father had more than enough and even some to spare. They were well taken care of and the, and the son knew that. When he came home, he found his father's arms were open. He loved and loved and loved on him. You know, the Elisha asked some questions about the family. He said, tell me about yourself. How is it with you? Elisha asked the servant, how is it with you? Uh, tell me about your marriage. How is it with your spouse? How are things going in your home? Tell me about your children. Is, is it well with your children, Elisha asked. How are you doing as a person? How are you doing as a partner? And how are you doing as a parent? I mean, those are kind of the three Ps. You look and you say, is it well with me? Is it well with with my marriage is it well with my children I want to pray a prayer and I really um, see the need from time to time just to call us to this attention years ago uh, James Dobson wrote an article the essential father and he wrote about the inmates who were incarcerated in a penitentiary and the man who he'd spoken to had been doing this for over 25 years never met an inmate who had a great uh, love for his father. So much so that in that penitentiary, they decided one year uh, to have a card company come and distribute cards during Mother's Day to all of the inmates, all of the people to send to their mothers. And the truck was empty. They went back and got another load. They thought the idea was so great because Mother's Day response was overwhelming that they did the same thing the ne that same year at Father's Day, and not one card was purchased. My, when I think about that in this fatherless generation, they begin to say, God, help us as fathers to be engaged. Help us to be part of our children's lives. Many years ago when I was in transition, I can remember it vividly. I had a call of God in my life and I disobeyed that call. One night, uh, I was watching television. I was in Ely, Minnesota, and uh, Billy Graham was on TV. I had a football scholarship, was playing football, and I felt the Lord spoke to my heart through Billy Graham. And he said these words, if you don't serve me now, you never will. I decided that evening to pack up everything I had and left, and my football jersey and spikes and everything are still in the locker, far as I know. I left. Later, of course, I apologized to the coach and, and uh, found out that I, I had uh, really been on a disobedience path. But thankful, I called my dad. My dad left whatever he was doing. In my time of transition, he met me at the rest stop just south of Virginia. 
There we talked through it, went up to Crane Lake for a couple of days. I don't know what my dad was doing at that time, but he dropped it all to get me through that transition. It was about 15 years later, I was at another transition. And I talked to my dad and my dad talked to me and I can remember that transition. I worked for my dad's company and my brothers were running the company. And later I found out, actually just a couple of years ago, that my dad asked my brothers not to pay me too much because they said he might be tempted to stay and he has a call of God in his life. I think my dad was paying attention. He paid attention 15 years prior to. He paid attention year in and year out. He paid attention and said, you know, I don't want to do anything to get in the way of what God has in store for my son. You know, I think of that in our own lives and to begin to say, are we paying attention? Are we looking around, seeing and recognizing what God has in store for our children? I want you to pay attention. It's made all the difference for me and I have done the same for my children and prayerfully and hopefully for my grandchildren. Let's take a moment and let's pray. Lord, in this season, in this time, in this Father's Day, we want to pay attention. We want, Lord, to be aware and, Lord, to be alert to the things that surround us. We pray in Jesus' name, God, that you'd enable us to have a discerning ear and eyes that can see. And, Lord, help us to respond out of obedience and to be and to do everything you call us to do and be. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Lord, I pray, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in our lives, in the lives of our children and in the lives of our grandchildren. From generation to generation, let Jesus be high and lifted up in their lives. Let us pray. Let us love our families. Let us love our wives. Let us be all that you've called us to be for your glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say amen? Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Father's Day and to know that we're praying for you. Amen. God bless.